NBA fans, welcome to an episode of King's Court brought to you by sports-kings.com. I'm filling in for Andy Flynn as host. He's a LeBron James of our show here, but he decided to pull the dip like LeBron's going to do to Miami. Wait, <laughs> just, let me chill. All right, let me let me introduce you to the round table. I got Desmond Palmer of New York Sports Kings. What's up, Desmond? Happy to be a part of New York Sports Kings, one of the newest members. Shout out to Sean, by the way, one of our newest Yankee writers. Um, but, you know, hashtag Bron Bron to South Beach. Bron Bron, if you see this, come back. Oh, that was a go back. Don't, don't go back to Cleveland. They don't want you. They don't deserve you. He saw me pulling. Right, absolutely. absolutely. And then we got the, the Laker fan who is, this is probably the best time of the season for him. It's been the, uh, <laughs> the first time he's been able to be optimistic about something. Michael Prosser, how are you? Uh, well, first off, it's good to be back. You know, I've been on hiatus for what seems like an eternity, all of two weeks. Man, that's an eternity in the Internet world. But, yes, I have been waiting for this for um, – when was the beginning of last season's tip-off? Like, you know, <laughs> I feel like a Mets fan right now. Anyways, oh, so hey, how about oh. this? How's the, how, you have a hashtag, Desmond? How's this for my hashtag? Fuck your couch, Dan Tony. Fuck your couch. Language. <laughs> Language, Michael. Uh, <laughs> my, this, is the, this is the not safe for work episode of... <laughs> of Unbelievable. Andy of leaves for two seconds and we, we just completely get out of control. My hashtag is long live Mello because he is a views machine. I hope mm. Mello stays in New York so I can just keep writing pointless articles about him that 10,000 people <laughs> want to read for some reason. So anything that Mello does, people love. So keep it up, Mello. You just keep, get Lala and everybody just to get on hey, board. Hey, Frank, I just got an ESPN update. Mello ate a sandwich, dude. Write that down. Yeah, was it was it salami? I bet you like salami. It was it was actually <laughs> actually um it says oh wait the, the, it came across ticker it's it was prosciutto and Swiss. Oh, prosciutto is good stuff. Prosciutto Anyways, so let's Swiss. get started. With, let's get started with the tops. We're going way off track here. Um, so the first topic we want to go with is Chris Bosh. We're going to talk about Chris Bosh a little bit. He was offered a max contract reportedly by the Houston Rockets. Um, the question is simply, uh, do you think Chris Bosh is worth a max contract? I'll start with you, Michael. <laughs> uh, this is funny. No, I don't think Chris Bosh is worth a max contract. I mean, come on. Wow, yes, the hate is real. I, yes, the hate is real. I, I Look, and this is in no way in any – Chris Bosh, if you ever get a chance to see this, this is no way I disrespect you. But what's great about this is you're never going to see this, so I can say whatever I want. No, look, the point is it, it's, it's, it's been proven in Toronto that – Chris Bosh is not going to be one of those guys who's going to carry a team to the playoffs. Yes, those Toronto teams were kind of mediocre a little bit. I don't want to say it was all Chris Bosh's fault, but at the same time, you kind of got to put some blame on Chris Bosh for not being able to get him over the hump. Yes, he won championships, but he won championships with LeBron James. Not with Dwayne Wade, with LeBron James. Do I think he's worth a max contract? No. Do I think he's a good fit in Houston? Then that's a different story. You put him around a Dwight Howard, you give him a distributor... Like a, uh, I don't know, anybody that's not Jeremy Lin or Dwayne Wade with aging knees? Yeah, the guy's going to be, you know, the guy's going to put up points for you. He's, a, he's a, a fantastic big man. He can play the wing very well. But is he worth a max deal? No, I don't think so. Desmond? Chris Bosh? Max deal? No, I, I agree with Michael, but the rea reality of the NBA is you are worth what the market dictates, and Chris Bosh is exactly that. Um, like you said, in Toronto, he had those mediocre teams, and he's played well. I mean, for his career, he, he's averaged 19.2 points per game, around 50% at point four, four nine eight, and his numbers have dipped. So those are mostly from Toronto. Those are mostly from Toronto numbers. But like Michael said, he's not worth the max. He's not a max player. He is, in my opinion, a championship piece, and, and that goes a long way in saying that. But if I'm Houston... That money makes sense. Chris Bosh is not going to leave Miami for anything less than the max, anything less than a great situation, anything less than something that will provide playoff opportunities and championship opportunities other than playing alongside the best player in the world, LeBron James. So, no, he's not worth the max money, but the market dictates what a, what a player is worth, and that is what Chris Bosh is worth in this market. I mean, you look at the other – because he's played center this season most of the year. You look at the other quote-unquote centers on the market. Pau Gasol is on the market. Who He's been forced to play center even though he's not oh, a true center. Um, Emeka Okafor is there. All these other guys. <laughs> you really so, said Emeka Okafor. Right. So when you look at the market outside of Pau Gasol, who's a viable option, 
Chris Bosh dictates a lot. It's either me or Powell or everyone else. And Houston oh wants Bosh right now. It makes sense. It, it makes sense. And he's had – yes, he did win titles with LeBron, not with D-Wade. And, and, Mike, I'm glad you made that clear. But he has had impactful playoff and finals moments. Um, the, the best moment of his career by far – is the defense he played in 2013 because and this year he was just nowhere to be found defensively. And a lot of people complained that he wasn't seeing the ball a lot offensively, which is which attributed to him not being found a lot. But on deep, that was the same way it happened in 2013. Chris Bosh didn't get many touches against the, the Spurs the first time, but he played great defense on Tim Duncan, and he had that impact block on Tony Parker, which, which shifted the series. So... And the, the no call on Danny Green. Yes, I'm admitting it's a no call. But with that said, Chris Bosh is not worth the max, but the market dictates he is. And if I'm Houston, that is the right money because you are not going to lure him away from LeBron James, even though LeBron seems to be indecisive at the moment. LeBron is such a great player that even though he hasn't made his choice and no one has a clue what he's going to do, it's still enough to keep Chris Bosh away from a max deal. That's the money so you have to send. I'm so I'm so glad you brought that point up because all right, so I want to make a few points here. One, the Chris Bosh hate is real by you guys. I think Chris Bosh <laughs> third right there where you has went from overrated. Wait, before you go, I just want to say one thing. Michael might think he's like Pau Gasol money, which is like maybe like fifty. I don't think he's worth the max. But I think what Miami was asking him to take, which was like five years, eighty million, I think he's worth that. But I don't think he's worth the ninety-four mil. I just think I think max players at this point is a very sh short list. And I think it's LeBron, KD, Melo, and I, I think maybe Russell Westbrook may be getting to that point. All maybe right, all right. Not, not I'm nice. just saying. Chris Paul's not a max right. player, seriously. Chris Paul. Chris, Chris Paul. Chris Paul. I don't know, man. He's getting older. He hasn't won in the playoffs like that. I'm just saying. Point all right, guard all right. So, so, so back to Chris Bosh here. So I think Chris Bosh has gone from overrated to when he first got to Miami to maybe the most underrated player in the league because <laughs> everybody thinks that Chris wow. Bosh that Chris Bosh is just this dude that stands out and shoots threes now. But like <laughs> Miami has stripped him of his game basically. Like they've told him to be the stretch four, but. I mean, if you remember Chris Bosh in Toronto, he can do so much more than that. Right. It's just that he's not – he's required to do what he's told in Miami to win championships. But <laughs> having said that, I want to trash Chris Bosh a little bit because don't be, don't be LeBron's little servant and wait until he you – know, you make a decision for yourself. You want to go to Houston, go to Houston. Don't be like, well, I'm just going to sit here and see what LeBron decides, and then whatever he decides, I'm just going <laughs> to go with him. No, Chris Bosh, be your own man, goddammit. Anyways, hey, language. Which, yeah. By the way, Frank, if I if I can make a point before we shift, if let's say in the uh, in the uh, you know foreseeable future, let's say he does go to Houston, what is that going to do going up against that Western Conference talent night in and night out? Plus, in a you know, let's say minimum six game series, how's that going to affect the play of Chris Bosh? We already saw that he was you know all but absent this year, and that's in a maligned Eastern Conference. What is he going to do when he gets to play actual talent in the Western Conference? What is well, he going to do mean, when he goes up against the Zach Randolph? you got to consider is he might, actually, he might actually be allowed to be himself in Houston. Not That's true. Just like, not I think there, dude that stands outside and shoots threes. I think, there's a few, I think there are a few players in the Eastern Conference that can transition to the Western Conference. I, just a few. But I think if, they, if most of them were in that conference, they would not be doing what they're doing now. I think Lance Stevenson could play in the Western Conference – just because of his toughness. Like, he's not an elite player, but his toughness and his defense would translate well. And there's a few others, but Chris Bosh is definitely one of those guys. If he's able to play like himself, instead of parking in the corner, maybe he'd be able to play like himself. But I agree. In, in Toronto, he was he was sensational, and he was the lone warrior. I mean, his last – his finest year was 24 points a game, 10 rebounds. <laughs> you right. can't ask for better. Like, you can't ask for better than that. He's no slouch. The, uh, the last point I want to bring up before we move on is, like, imagine if Chris Bosh, LeBron James, and Melo all leave the East. Like, you realize that the Washington Wizards would probably be the favorite to win. <laughs> next season yeah, that gives me something to write leave. about. I enjoy that. Like, you do, real, you do realize that's an actual thing. Anyways, so we're going to continue with the Heat here a little bit, and we're going to talk about some signings that they made. Um, the Heat signed two players today. Uh, they signed Danny Granger to a two-year deal. 
and then they signed Josh McRoberts to the mid-level exception, a four-year, I believe it was $23 million deal. McBob. Um, McBob. Yeah, McBob. <laughs> uh, get that hair under control, McBob. You know, you're going to be around, like, South Beach. You know, there's going to be an attractive girls, you know, in bikinis. You don't want to be rocking, like, what, They may whatever. like the Jesus look. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it might be a new, you know, South Beach is trendy like that. But the question is, is uh, do we think that those two signings are good signings and, more importantly, enough to keep LeBron maybe thinking about coming back to South Beach? Desmond, let's start with you. I think they're, they're I can't say they're good because if they were good, they would make, Le, they would sway LeBron's well, indecisiveness. I but I don't think that turned the tide in the LeBron sweepstakes. I don't think it gave the Heat that much of a boost in regards to make, getting LeBron to come back um, or to commit to staying with them for long term, even though the reports are that he wants a max deal for one to two years. Uh, the fact of the matter is Josh Roberts is a solid role player in this league. He could be for you. He may even be could be a starter for the Heat if they keep Chris Bosh at center and he stays and he stays with the Heat. Um, he, he does have range. He does hit the three-point shot a bit. Um, he's a feisty guy. He's like a he's like a, a better version of Birdman with range. And and at this point in his career, because Birdman is not the Birdman he was before. So let me get that straight. But th that's just the way it is. And and plus, he's a feisty guy. He he plays tough. He could bang in the paint. Um, we also with the elbow to LeBron. He's not afraid to get a little dirty there in regards to those type of plays. But that's just it's a it's a it's a depth signing. It's to add more depth to the team. And make sure they have something to, to go forward in this free agency. Danny Granger is not the Danny Granger of old. We've all we all know that. But again, he's a, a depth signing. He's basically going to replace probably Richard Lewis and fill in that Richard Lewis role. Can so he's he going to be, be the third best player on the team. Oh man, that, that's <laughs> we all know that that didn't work out. Even though Richard Lewis, I will say, probably had a more inspiring finals than Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. But I, I will say this, Danny Granger is not a Danny Granger of old, but, again, Pat Riley brought in two. They could be solid role players on this team if all goes well. I mean, this free agency is not over. We don't know what's going to happen. But with those two signings, it's nothing great. It's nothing horrible. It's just kind of middle-of-the-road signings. All right, Michael, what do we think? Josh McBob, Jesus look on South Beach. What do you think of it? Well, you know, hey, if 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 Mick Bob can part the uh, the south the, the South Beach seas down there, walk through water all the way to a championship, you know, Pat Riley might be looking like an even bigger genius than he usually is. But if Mick Bob starts rocking the Jesus sandals down there, oh boy, I don't know. Uh, but you know, hey, as somebody well, since we're talking about the gospel, as somebody who's been preaching the gospel according to Danny Granger for a long time, you can go back to previous shows. You don't even have to add how I feel about Danny Granger signing in Miami. But altogether, from a basketball standpoint, on a scale of A to you know F, it, it's probably a B minus, maybe a B. It's I'm a, surprised you went that high. That's pretty good. A, yeah, that's not a, bad. It's a, yeah, the, yeah, you know, it's one of those, like, <laughs> if he moves because on He's one end. He's a curve right now. On one end, you do have Jesus McRoberts. I mean, Josh Mc. Christ or whatever his name is, <laughs> who, who like like Desmond said, he has range. He can you know he can go inside. He can you know be outside. He could do what Birdman couldn't, and that's everything except have a cool mohawk. But you never know, man. The Jesus look could turn into the mohawk in five seconds. Oh yeah, that's a quick we fix. We don't we don't know. But you know, I, Danny Granger is kind of the I I kind of, when I first heard about, it, I kind of thought Danny Granger was going to be a replacement to that psycho Mario Chalmers. Because, you know, Mario Chalmers is just out there, man. That guy's out there, man. Uh, but, Mario, you know, he, he, could be a better, he could be a better option than Mario Chalmers. So it's a decent move. It's, it's, it's good, not great, but it's not good as in like a, oh, that's good. It's a, eh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's the best way you can sum it up, really. It's like eating unsalted green beans. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so I think uh, my thoughts on the moves are that the first thing I thought of is that if you're M NBA free agents, look at me right now. If you're an NBA free agent and you're not out at the three-point line, 
just like practicing shot after shot after shot. Exactly. You need you need to check yourself because that's who's getting paid. If you can shoot a three point shot, you won't get paid in this league. So anybody on the free agent market, you need to go work out for teams and show them you can shoot threes. Um, Danny Granger, I'm a little underwhelmed by. I mean. I like Danny Granger. I just don't think he's – it, it sort of reminds me too much of a project like they did with Beasley and Odin last year. Right. And, it, you know, it, it's just another guy that their hope is going to – they're hoping is going to pan out. Um, Josh McRoberts, I like – I mean, I like Josh McRoberts. I mean, he has a very um, limited skill set, I think. I don't – I mean, I think he shoots. That's pretty much all he can do. But, I mean, it's obviously move, It's obviously a move that – was in anticipation of getting LeBron back. I mean, if it were me, I would have liked, and I know this was a rumor, I would have liked Anthony Morrow a lot better, just because I think he would have came cheaper. He's a, and I think he's a better, uh, yeah, and he's a, I think he's a better shooter than than Josh McRoberts is, just because I think, I mean, I think Anthony Morrow is very underrated. I think he's one of the best shooters in the league. I mean, I was a Nets fan. I watched him all season with the Nets. He dropped when he was here. He dropped forty five points uh, one game. Just, just. Bombing threes, and that, I mean that's what he does. So I mean, some people, some people want to comment. If I was if I was going A through F like Michael, I would probably give it more like a C minus, and a, it's definitely more of a B to a B plus if LeBron comes back because both of those players are definitely to LeBron. Um, but we're gonna move on. We are just gonna quick fly through these. We want to know the best signing so far in free agency, Michael. What do you think was the best signing? Well, I, you know, this might not be the flashiest move, but I really like Babo Cephalosha going to Atlanta for three years. He played solid defense in OKC. I like Atlanta. Was, you know, trying to get over that hump in the Eastern Conference could very well sneak into the eighth seed with, Cephal- with Cephalosha. Like I said, it's not flashy, but defense wins championships. That's a guy who can guard some people. I like Cephalosha in Atlanta. Wow. He really went with Tavo Cephalosha. Anyways, Desmond, move on. Desmond, who do you got? <laughs> oh, goodness. I was not expecting um, Tavo Cephalosha. That was, uh, yeah, that, that, was uh, that was pretty far down my list, too. But, hey, you know what? I like Tavo Cephalosha. I'm not going to say it's the worst move in the it's world. The, but, you know, like I, I, I like said, it. it's, not a flash, it's not a flashy move. But it's one of those moves where you could look back and be like, okay, hey, that made some serious sense. Look how it helped here. <laughs> you know, there, you know. Or yeah, you could Tavo completely Cephalosha. blow back in their damn face. Championship piece, Tavo Cephalosha. Anyways, Desmond, yeah. let's go. Count it. Um, I like this move, and he's not going to be a starter, but he's going to be impactful, and I also like it for him. I like Sean Livingston. Um, uh, going to the, the Warriors. Pick. Going to the Warriors. Came back from that horrific injury. We all remember that. Um, revitalized his career in Brooklyn. And not only did he revitalize his career, I'll be the first to say I think Sean Livingston kind of undersold himself. I think he could be a starter in this league because he's not – rangy, but he's lengthy, he can play defense, he has court command, which is something you really don't see in regards to point guards nowadays, where he has the floor vision. There were a lot of times this season with the Nets, and especially in the playoffs as well, and especially in those four games against the Heat that they beat them, the this floor was spread out, and it looked more under control under Sean Livingston than it did under Darren Williams, and I was sitting here like, whoa, this is a guy that maybe should be starting for a few games, so... I love the Sean Livingston pick. I think not only will it help the Warriors court vision-wise because Steph Curry is still young. He'll still make some of those decision mistakes, He's but he's 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 a top five point guard in this league, so there's no worries about him. But Sean Livingston is his backup. Every point guard needs to turn around and know that he has a guy on the bench that's going to come on the floor and continue the floor general-like moves that, he's, that he was doing all along the game. Plus, Sean Livingston can guard two guards, and he can play defense. And he has strength. And he has strength going to the hole. I mean, he's spinning on smaller point guards and on some two guards on his way to the hole and not getting knocked around. And he's converting. So I like the Sean Livingston signing by the Golden State Warriors. I love that he's yes, getting this recognition. Three years, sixteen million. It's a story. It's a great signing. And not only does it build them leadership wise, because I do think Sean Livingston can also be a leader. It helps them defensively on the perimeter, and I, I love what they did. I love what the Warriors did with Sean Livingston. Yeah, I also had Sean Livingston as my signing. Um, I'm going to bring up some additional points that Desmond didn't get to. Um, I think he brought up a good point about Sean Livingston being able to uh, defend two guards because I think what the Sean Livingston signing does for the Warriors is open them up to eventually trading Clay Thompson 
in a Kevin Love deal. Maybe not in the off season, but come this trade deadline. Towards, or maybe I mean maybe they might because you know what you see with a lot of NBA players is they wait till the the All Star weekend. Even though I still don't think we're going to see Kevin Love on with Minnesota at all next season because the bridges have just been burned. Like, how do you go into that next team meeting like so? Hey guys, this is awkward. Yeah, it's it, you know uh, what's his name? Ricky Rubio already came out and said we're ready to move on from a leader. We need a new leader. And I was sitting there like, is this Ricky Rubio talking, or did he get like real life hacked? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, but, Ricky Rubio, you need to learn how to make a twelve foot jump shot before you start yeah, talking trash about exactly. one of the top twenty players in the league. You need to fall back a little bit. But but I, but I agree with you. The Sean Livingston pick, I mean, it just makes sense. And with Clay Thompson being on the trade market. Who knows who they could get? Kevin Love is obviously the primary target, though. Yeah, I mean, the worst kept secret in, in the league last year was that Sean Livingston was the best point guard on the Nets last season. I mean, he was he, he was just better than Darren Williams. I don't think anybody will argue it. I mean, it's a great story. Um, every, I'm I'm rooting for Sean Livingston. I think everybody else is as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's really a great sign. And not only was it a great is it a great fit, but they got him at a great price, which I, I think that's what that's the two combination of what goes into the best signing. It has to be a really good fit on the court, and then financially they got him for a great price, and I think he could have probably gotten more somewhere else if, you know, if he, he let. Been, he could have got waited. starter money. He could have got starter money and starter opportunity. I mean, Frank, you watched the Nets last season, as did I. I watched a bunch of games. This guy, every time he came onto the floor, it may not have been in regards to points, but just everything seemed to flow better. Everything just seemed to be more under control, whereas with Darren Williams – there's a lot of times I was left scratching my head, and I didn't have a lot of those moments with Sean Livingston. So yeah, he, try being try being an F in. You, you you scratch your head a lot more with Darren Williams last year. And one absolutely. little fact about Sean Livingston too is he's one of the best post players in the league too because he has such a size advantage. He was, I believe, he was first in points per post possession in the right. league last season. Um, we're gonna transition to the opposite end. We're gonna go with the worst signing of the off season so far, Desmond. Oh man, you know. This one, I, I was torn because there were two that I, I really weren't a fan of. The Martin Gortat signing, just in regards to the money, um, I really wasn't a fan of. But the Avery Bradley signing, I'm not a fan of. I thought the Celtics were really able, to, were really going to be able to move on from him, given that they just drafted Marcus Smart and James Young, two perimeter players who, quite frankly. Uh, we saw this in the NFL when Andrew Luck and RG3 came out. I'm not comparing the talent, but I'm just saying with Russell Wilson as well, when you throw the young pups onto the court or onto the field, when they get that experience, it kind of helps them transition faster. I think James Young is one of those guys where you got to get him on the court to, to help him improve Absolutely. and grow. He's not. What time is he going to see? Because Marcus Smart is going to get his court time. He's going to play two guard. There's no question because I don't know if they're going to get ready to get rid of Rondo right now. They might want to see how that pairing works out. Plus, Marcus Smart's decision making isn't point guard, NBA, NBA point guard level yet. Like he's not up there yet in regards to decision making, coming off a screen, setting guys up. So Rondo is still going to be there. But the Avery Bradley signing, you commit four years, thirty-two mil to a guy that you basically drafted to replace. Like you drafted James Young to replace him on a perimeter to get those touches. So I don't, I'm not really a fan of the Avery Bradley. Um, signing, even though I am a fan of Avery Bradley, but it just with the, what the Celtics are doing, it really it just didn't make sense to me. You drafted Marcus Smart, all right, he's gonna play two guard, but how are his minutes gonna look with Bradley? And then you drafted James Young, who's might play the three, but Jeff Green is there. We don't know what you're gonna do, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Michael, I'm gonna kind of take this in a different direction. Oh, there's a Look shocker. At me right now. Laker. Yes, you, Mr. Bus. How the hell do you get rid of Swaggy P? <laughs> like, how do you do this? How do you just let him walk? The he only hasn't, he hasn't thing, signed anywhere yet. He can still the come back. The only good thing about that Los Angeles Lakers team last season. Was Swaggy P. Not Nick Young. Forget Nick Young. Nobody gives a damn about Nick Young. Swaggy P. If we can just sign like the the personality, kind of like you know Cleveland did with Johnny Football. They didn't sign Johnny Manziel. They signed Johnny Football. Johnny Manziel's a nobody. Johnny Football does this. Yeah. If we can just sign Swaggy P, that would be great. But no, seriously, letting Nick Young walk, 
was stupid. <laughs> like I said, he was the only good thing about this Lakers team last year. He really season. was. Even there when his nothing, bad. and that's sad. When a a journeyman, he I mean he he'd been to what like five teams in five years or something. You know he was, he was like an unforgettable first round pick. Does completely nothing. Shows up in L.A. I had no idea who he was until the legend of Swaggy P just started growing. There's so many legendary and now things he's about. Gone. There's so many legendary he's things about Swaggy P. He's not coming back. Letting go of Kim Bowser is another one that I'm kind of skeptical about too because he came in in that um, I think he came in in the Steve Blake trade, and you know yeah. I was like, oh, Steve Blake is gone. Nobody <laughs> gave a damn. Oh, who did we get back? Nobody's great. <laughs> and then everybody's like, oh, Kim Bowser, hey, he's pretty good. Let's keep him. Nope. Let him walk. And this is all to try to get Carmelo. And what yeah, happens clear. if Carmelo doesn't come back? Like, what if what if he doesn't? Let's say he doesn't come to LA. Then I'm what? Not too sure about that. A blown up roster, all this cap space, and no good free agents to sign. You're screwed. Look we'll at somebody. The oh, already God. over before it began. So so clearly, Michael is just a very disgruntled and anxious Laker fan. Is basically what we learned from that segment. But um, I mean, there's so many interesting I things about Swaggy P. I put my faith in Julius Randle's fractured foot seriously. Come on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Julius Randle's gonna be a beast. But Did um, you know how you got the only, Swaggy P? Yeah, the only good thing about letting uh, Nick Young walk is that Iggy Azalea gets to walk with him, and then you get to see the back of her. But anyways, I mean. Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah. You see, I'm always, I'm always thinking on the op. You know, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I'm always looking at the positives of the situation. Um, you fancy, man. You fancy. Man who loves yeah, the, the other great the yoga pants, which I, yep. I still yet to find that guy, Frank. Yeah, I know the yoga pants guy. He's he's a legend. I, I think he's just a man, the myth, the legend kind of thing. But I mean, the other thing about Swaggy P is like the the 2000 what was it 2009 Washington Wizards. We need a 30 for 30 film on a team that had Nick Young, <laughs> Andre Black, Javale oh McGee, Gilbert Arenas. I'm missing somebody, but there's somebody else on that screen. There, there is a 30 for 30 for that team. It's called Shaq and the Fool. YouTube it and you'll see it. Yeah, you'll I think there's it. a 30 for 30 called Cops, too. That, that, <laughs> but um, the the worst signing, I got to go. I got to go with uh, shout out to Andy Flint. Keep working hard at your job there. Uh, Orlando Magic signed Ben Gordon mm. to a, a two year deal. Yeah, I, I don't even. I didn't even know Ben Gordon was still alive, let alone. I thought, no, I'm not gonna lie. I thought he retired. I gotta give him my analyst card. I thought he retired or was like just gone. That's crazy. I yeah, I thought, was, I thought I was gonna read a story like two weeks from now that said like Ben Gordon files for bankruptcy because like his accountant <laughs> screwed him on his deal. Anyways, oh, all I'm saying is that uh, I did not think Ben Gordon was going to be in the NBA this season, and somehow the Orlando Magic gave him a two-year deal. So shout out to them. And that's my worst signing, and it's not even close. I actually have not liked many of the signings thus far. I think the Avery Bradley deal you brought up, Gortat, I thought got too much money. Yeah, I didn't like those two. Yeah, I, I, I the only really Andre one that Carolinco I really back in Brooklyn. Like, that, that's a good deal. AK forty seven. That's my dude. You don't talk about AK forty seven. I'll boot you right where up. Is he? Ben, I didn't even. I'll send you the rush. He was. He was my <laughs> Ben Gordon. I had no idea he was still alive, let alone in the league. Oh, man. That's because you only follow basketball during the playoffs. That's the only reason why you don't know about AK forty seven. No, Let's I'm move a fifty percent Lakers fan. I'm a fifty yeah, percent yeah. basketball fan. I pull through the <laughs> Lakers, and that's it. Yeah, we we don't we don't troll AK forty seven on this show. That's like a written rule. It's it's in the it's in the handbook. You should have gotten it, Mike. I'm gonna email yeah. you a copy. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do it. He, he wouldn't show it to my house. house. Yeah, you're gonna end up like. In, in Siberia, like under <laughs> under some snow, and you, your mom's never gonna find you again. She's gonna be Lucky wondering. For me, I took Russian in college, so I'll be okay. <laughs> Any final thoughts, fellas? Any final thoughts about NBA free agency you want to talk about, Michael? Oh, yeah, your threat that you just gave me, Frank, was like eating unsalted green beans. <laughs> it's like eating unsalted green beans. It's other, gonna, it's, the epidemic has already started. You don't even other, know it. Other than the Sean Livingston deal, I love the Dirk Nowitzki signing just because it's Dirk. And the three-year, $30 million deal, he, took, he just left so much money on the table for the Mavs to go and try to get whoever. And Carmelo was a name out there that they were trying to go after. There's still other free agents out there, but just uh, speaking of Carmelo, man, oh, man, I, I just I pray you do the right thing. Stop listening to Lala. Listen to your basketball mind and do the right thing. Do it. Is that what, Spike Joe? Is that what, Spike what's, what's Lee right reference in the state of New York? What's the right thing though, Desmond? That, that actually wasn't a. You know what? That's funny that you said that. It's that was my mistake. But no, Chicago, man. Listen, <laughs> before, 
Before I was pulling for Washington, you guys know I, I struck up that idea. That idea is going out the window, so I'm going to go with the second one, which is Chicago. They have the better roster to compete for a championship. If he's look now, I am saying this. If L.A. is in the picture, then there's no reason why he shouldn't return to the Knicks because if he's looking at L.A., the Knicks have basically the same path, probably even a better chance to improve because of Phil Jackson and the roster just looks better. You also get thirty million dollars tied up right. in a thirty-five year old shooting guard who may exactly. not be able to walk anymore. You get more money. You get I don't wanna you know, I'm tired of people people on Twitter like, oh, he played with Kobe at the gym, everything was right <laughs> in the world. Listen, I could play with Michael at the gym and we win ten games straight. That don't mean we go into the NBA and gonna look nice. That's just I about to say if we win ten games straight, you're carrying this team, Desmond. <laughs> I'm just I think, saying, Mike, I think Michael's got a mean post up game. He just he just doesn't know it yet. Everyone you know what? I'm like, everyone I'm looks good in the gym. Mm-hmm. Even I though I'm not know. I'm not saying Kobe's not gonna come back and beat Kobe, but what I'm saying is in regards to chemistry, in regards to what they can do together, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Kobe Bryant is an alpha scorer. Carmelo Anthony, an alpha scorer. And they both do their scoring from the perimeter. It makes no sense. There's going to be some type of fight in the locker room. There's going to, be, you know what? They're going to ask the NBA to create a rule where there can be two balls on the court because there's no <laughs> way in hell that Carmelo Anthony and Kobe Bryant can truly coexist on a championship level. They're going to win some games. They're going to be flashy, but they're not winning the championship together. It's, you know what good. kind of dude I was in the court in the gym? I was the kid that was wearing Starberries because I was too. <laughs> Yo, the Starberries were that. that I was wearing Starberries. Oh, my yeah, God. Starberries. Yo, the Starberries were only like 50 cents a pair, so everybody <laughs> rocked them. Yo, anyway, he, won, yeah, exactly. he, won like, he won like two championships in China, by the way. Shout out to Stefan Marbury, man. Yeah, Stefan. Yo, Steph, keep getting those checks. We're, we're, we're not here to judge. Speaking of keep getting those checks, like that's my closing thought. I want basketball Twitter and all you fans out there who think you know everything about the game Stop telling these NBA players to not take as much money as they can. Like, exactly. nobody tells you how much money to put in your bank account. Stop acting like Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki, like, didn't make $200 million during their careers, <laughs> and now they're taking pay cuts because they're old. Like, don't act like you, – you you do know that Tim Duncan has signed a max deal before. You do know that Dirk Nowitzki has signed a max deal before. It's not Mind like you. people were just taking pay cuts the whole time. Mind you, Tim Duncan was very close to leaving San Antonio. No one wants to remember that time that the Magic were close to having their own big three of Grant Hill, um, Grant Hill, Tracy McGrady, and Tim Duncan. They were close to accomplishing that, but it didn't work out. And the reason why it didn't work out is because Doc Rivers had some very strict rules in regards to coaching, in regards to you know team stuff, like you can't bring your wife on the plane, this, that, and stuff. It, it happened, but Tim Duncan came back. Plus, look what he came back to. He had freaking David Robinson and Greg Popovich. Like, let's not act like Dirk Nowitzki and Tim Duncan. Some guy Tim named Robert Ory. Yeah, like, let's not act like these guys didn't have situations that were kind of okay to come back to. Like, it's not like they were just on the open market. They're like, you know what, I'm going to take less, and we have no one on this team, and let's bring in all these free agents. They had yeah, teams. Yeah, exactly. Like, salute to Tim Duncan for taking a pay cut now, but let's, uh, let's not act like right. he plays – Let's not act like Tim Duncan's contract is like two two uh, two Kit Kat bars or something like yeah, that. I mean, like, dude still gets money. I mean, to play I mean, the ball. Salute to Tim Duncan, man. I mean, that that Spurs team barely won the finals uh, this year. I mean, the pay cut he's taken to improve this team just means so much. I mean, what did they win it in like seven games? What was it? They barely beat the Heat. Shot clock buzzer. What was that? <laughs> hey, right, I so. don't know, man. That's beyond me. But <laughs> yeah, I want to say it was was it five. Like, does that sound about right? Five? Exactly. What was it? Like one, two, three, points four, in the first half or something like that? I don't know. Some guy named Kawhi won MVP. You know, he barely played it. I don't know. Something about a fifth? <laughs> all right, all right. We're getting what off track here. Fifth title? All right, so um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, everybody visit sports-kings.com. Um, we got all kinds of things. We got every major sport. We got New York sports. We got D.C. sports, Phoenix sports. Um, MMA, you want to box, we'll box you. We do we do that. That's how we run things. We'll just give you a quick left hook like Floyd. We don't mess around. We got that defense. We're going to run this town um, tonight. But uh, thanks, thanks for tuning in to another edition of King's Court. And until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>